an example of, uh, of hatred that blacks have against whites. They consider that to be a, a nutcase. Um, That's what he was, Larry. I, I agree. He wasn't racist, he was a nut. I absolutely agree with that. Uh, but if we want to take the argument that you look at something an individual does, like those people did with, to James Byrd, and then create a case that uh, there's a lot of racism against, uh, against black people, you could do the same thing with crime blacks commit, commit against whites. If you look at violent interracial crime, black-white crime, there are about a million acts of violent black-white crime any given year. And by violent, I mean rape, murder, uh, uh, robbery uh, with aggravation, manslaughter. Uh, about 90% of that involves a black perpetrator and 90% involves a white victim. But you're half right, Larry, because as you well know, so you don't tell the whole story. The other part of the story is that I most, most, well, most, but you won't, but I've heard you before this argument, you won't admit this. Well, the, most crimes, let me finish. Your audience most the crime, argument most crimes committed against whites are committed by other whites. Most crimes committed by blacks are committed by other blacks. Well, What's your point? It, it depends on the category of crime. Almost half So of you're the, picking one or two categories? Well, on, almost half of, the, of certain categories of crime committed by blacks are in fact, uh, are in fact uh, against white people. But the point is this, Tavis, uh, when you look at the percentage of blacks in the population, blacks are committing far more crime against whites than the other way around, way more. Uh, look at uh, 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 polling data, uh, uh, anti-Semitism. Uh, the good news is that in America, anti-Semitism is at an all-time low. However, in the black community, the anti-Semitic rate is almost three times higher Larry, than I, in the non-black community. Still think, I, I want to put on this list. But I still think though, that does a disservice to the facts. If most crimes committed against whites are committed by whites, most crimes committed against blacks are committed by blacks, I think you're doing a disservice Tavis, when you're not representing Tavis, it's intellectual Tavis, dishonesty. Tavis, almost half of the victims of black crime are, in fact, white people. Almost half. Uh, the victims of, uh, of white crime almost are, are, are very rarely uh, black people. It just isn't true. When you look at black-white crime, black are committing a lot more crime against whites than the other way around, even when you adjust for the percentage of the population. Dr. King said all the time, as you well know, King's definition, who is an expert, obviously, on violence. Dr. King, who I think we both respect here, mm -hmm. King's argument was that racism, his definition was this, racism equals prejudice plus power. Racism is defined as prejudice Ridiculous. plus power. Ridiculous. You, you didn't buy that argument? You, you didn't buy that definition? Because the, well, the point is, if racism well, equals prejudice plus power, black folk who are powerless by and large, who can be prejudiced but don't have the power to be racist. That, that is one of the most idiotic things I've ever calling heard. Calling King an idiot? Uh, when Reginald Denny... Are you calling King an idiot? When Reginald Denny was on the ground and Damien Football Williams had a brick in his hand and was trying to kill him, uh, did Reginald, did Reginald uh, Denny face somebody who had power? I think so. What, what an absurd thing to say. You don't have power, therefore you can't be a bigot. Uh, when State Senator Diane Watson blasted Warren Carter, the black man who championed the cause of eliminating affirmative action, she said to him, because he's married to a white woman, let me tell you something. The reason you're supporting the abolition of affirmative action is because you have no ethnic pride. You're married to a white woman. You want to be white. Now, was she racist because she didn't have power? Was she not racist because she didn't have power? It doesn't make any sense. Black people can be racist. It doesn't matter whether you have power or whether you don't have power. And the fact is, black people are doing all sorts of hideous things to whites, when if it happened the other way around, we'd be yelling and screaming. Here's the crazy question. I want to move down this list, as I keep saying, but you, you, I, I love talking to you. The thing is, though, as you're making these arguments now, Larry, and this is the point I don't know that you ever understand, or, or not you, but black conservatives also do not understand. When you sit on a national television show and your entire diatribe, mm. the diatribe. entire talk show, you diatribe. pontificate ad nauseum pontificate about ad nauseum. the black crisis, about the black struggle, I heard you say nothing yet challenging about white people, and that's what most folks get from you every my, day on radio, That's my Larry. second chapter, Tavis. We haven't gotten to it. My, okay, second, walk, my, my, second, my second chapter has to do with white condescension. Right. And the point behind my whole book, Tavis, the first two chapters is, not that the the majority of blacks are racist. They're not, nor that the majority of whites are racist. Okay. They're not. Right. But to the extent that there is racism in the country, there's a great deal of racism coming out of the black community. When Jesse Jackson refers to Jews as Jaime and New York as Jaime Town, when Spike Lee says he doesn't like interracial couples and when he sees one, he gives them visual daggers, when, uh, when Al Sharpton refers to Jews as diamond merchants, we got a problem here and we ought to call people on Let that. me ask you, let me ask you, I got to break one last, another, another time here. Let me ask you this. Do you at least see, and I'm not talking even about you in particular, but people mm -hmm. like you who are black, who have a more conservative bent on radio. Do you see at least the argument that many African Americans who are to the left ideologically, the argument they make is that when you tune into Larry Elder, when you tune into Ken Hamlin, when you tune into Armstrong Williams, when you tune into whomever, the majority of what you hear, and I've listened to your show for many, many years in LA, we used to work together, the majority of what you hear more often than not is Larry and others being more challenging of black folk than white folk do you at least see that and then understand how black folk then have an issue with Larry Elder? Well, 
Tavis, I can't. I can't this account. This is a pure I, I, airtime. I can't, I can't account for for Hamlin or for Armstrong. I can't speak for them. But your airtime. I, I, I can speak for me. Right. And here's what I try to do on my show. This uh, obsession with racism diverts time, effort, and energy from real problems. And the biggest problem facing the black community, Tavis, is not racism. The biggest problem is children having children. And that is a product of the welfare state. Secondly, the problem of DWB, driving while black, is largely a function of the war on drugs. That's the reason there are so many interactions between blacks and the cops. We should call off the war on drugs. Uh, blacks will benefit more than anybody else through the privatization of Social Security, something that Jesse Jackson and the Democratic Party oppose. So yes, I'm getting on some of these black leaders because I think they're doing a net disservice and taking time and energy away from problems that can be solved if we uh, tone down the, the racism rhetoric. Speaking of time and energy, I got the energy, I ain't got the time, I got to take a break. The book is entitled, The Ten Things You Can't Say in America, Ten Things You Cannot Say in America by our friend Larry Elder. More of this discussion in just a moment. Stay where you are. All friends here. We're all buddies. We're, we're all gonna, buddies. We're, we're going we're to go out and eat ribs after this. And yeah, we agree on nothing, but we, we we're, we're friends here. This guy is a triple threat. He's doing radio. He's doing television. Moral court. The clip you just saw, and he's doing books. And he did this one with a provocative title: "The Ten Things You Can't Say in America." It is written by Larry Elder. Let me ask uh, uh, Gary and Corey to put this list back up again, so I can scroll down this right quick. Uh, Larry was trying to talk a little earlier, and I know some of y'all were trying to read and listen at the same time. So let me scroll down this list of the top ten things you cannot say in America. The first, we've already had a little bit of discussion about blacks are more racist than whites. Number two, white condescension is as bad as black racism. Uh, I, can, I can agree with that, I think. Mm -hmm. Number three, the media bias. It's real, it's widespread, it's destructive. That is nonsense, Larry Elder. Uh, we talked about that earlier, about this so-called liberal media bias. There when folks won't come on, there, there then they call it a liberal bias. There most certainly is a liberal bias. All right. There. Number four, the glass ceiling full of holes. Give me a quick, give me a quick discourse on that right quick. Well, uh, President Clinton gave a speech once, Tavis, and he said that women earn 75 cents on the dollar for every, uh, for identical work performed by men. Uh, to give you an idea of how stupid that is, let's suppose you have a factory and you've got 500 men. I come up as a headhunter and I present you 500 women who can do exactly the same work, exactly uh, as well, but you can pay me 75 cents on the dollar? You're telling me guys wouldn't fire all the men and hire all women and look at women all day instead of guys? It doesn't make any sense. It is intellectually insulting to suggest that men are doing exactly the same work as women. Women are ready to do the same work as men, but they're ready to be paid less. But guys aren't hiring them. Are you, are you it makes no sense at are, all. Are you suggesting, though, that there is not this issue of, uh, that there is not a lack of pay equity between men and women? You're no. not suggesting that, I are am. you? I am. If, if you compare apples to apples. You think that men, you let me think finish. That, let me finish. You compare apples to apples to you apples. You think that women in the workplace are given the same same respect that men when it comes to pay equity? I didn't say anything about respect. I'm just talking about money. Uh, when, you look at apple, question, when you look at apples to apples, a right. woman that graduated from, from school A, guy graduated from school A, they finished the same level. They went to work for the same company. The woman did not take time out to have children. When you look at apples to apples, there's virtually no difference in their pay. Number five, put that list back up right quick. Let me scroll through all ten of these, then we will go to a break. Can I see? Drum roll, please. Number five on that list, Gary. Get it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. There it is. Number five, America's greatest problem, not crime. Racism or bad schools, it is illegitimacy. I know Barbara Bush is down with that one. Number six, there is no health care crisis. Oh, Larry, we got to talk about that. America's welfare state, the tyranny of the status quo. Republicans versus Democrats may be a dime's worth of difference. Ooh. Uh, Ralph Nader would agree with that point. Number nine, <laughs> the war against drugs is Vietnam too. We're losing this one too. I know a lot of black folk would agree with that, Larry Elder. And number 10, gun control advocates, good guys with blood on their hands. Right. We will talk about Republicans and Democrats and what Larry thinks of President Bush or President Gore. Okay. Is the book by Larry Elder there on your screen. You can check him out as the judge on Moral Court. Send me a check, Larry. I promoted everything <laughs> you do.